This is Kyle Schwarber. This year, he's hit 47 home runs, but he struck out more than anybody else in baseball. He knocked in 104 runners, but he won the porcelain slugger, the worst batting average in the league. Well, he gets on base. He walked 126 times, second to only Juan Soto, but he was the worst defender in all the baseball. All those numbers accumulating to 1.4 fan grass war. I think Kyle Schwarber, he's definitely the most interesting player to look at at baseball. And we're going to have a good time discussing, is he actually good at baseball? We'll start here. Like I said, Kyle Schwarber racked up 1.4 fan grass war. Now, war is a stat not everybody loves, but it's a stat that's purpose is to try and get a player's value down to one singular number. But clearly the biggest knock to that overall number grading how good of a player Schwarber is, the defense. Schwarber's played a handful of positions in his nine-year career, but at this point, if he is playing in the field, you can expect him to be in left field. Now, like I said, he ranks in as the worst defender in baseball. Outs above average, negative 19. Defensive run saved, negative 20. So clearly, he is not good out there. Why do the Phillies play him? Well, that's a good question. The Phillies have had an interesting year. Of course, making the World Series last year afterwards, Bryce Harper had to get Tommy John surgery. So when he returned to the Phillies lineup in May, he wasn't able to play in the outfield. And even to this day, he's not playing there. He's since then transitioned to first base. Of course, picking up a position he's never played in the big leagues, it's going to take time. So when he got brought back to the roster, he was their DH. That puts Schwarber at an interesting position. He's pretty much forced to go out there every day as the Phillies left fielder. Recently, he's not playing there as much due to Johan Rojas, who we talked about a couple videos ago, who has been great. And then Brandon Marsh, who to his credit has also been a positive glove in the outfield and has proved that he's a pretty damn good hitter. Brandon Marsh is an exclusively a platoon hitter. He's certainly better against righties. He's hitting 290, OPS at 864. Against lefties, it drops down to a 717 OPS. But but it still might outweigh Schwarber's negative impact at left field. And Johan Rojas, great defender, holds his own against both righties and lefties. I don't really see why Schwarber should ever have to play the field. But he does, and he's attributed 872 innings out there in left field this year. Let's move on to batting. And the first thing people are going to talk about, the batting average. Like we mentioned, he has the lowest batting average in all the baseball, hitting under 200 this year. I'll be the first one to say, batting average does matter. It's not just about on-base percentage. People will say that a walk is as good as a hit. No, it is not. You would rather have the hit. You'd rather have the outcome that creates the opportunity for more things to happen. Maybe an error. Maybe you have a very quick runner on the base pass that can take an extra base. But walks are also very important. It is possible for both things to matter. And I think that's where a lot of old age and newer age fans really seem to butt heads. Because Kyle Schwarber and his 126 walks, while he might have the lowest batting average in baseball, he ranks top 50. He ranks number 46 in on-base percentage. That right there explains why Kyle Schwarber bats leadoff for the Phillies. It's not traditional. If you think about baseball, hell, even 10 years ago, the leadoff hitter was your traditional speed guy. Now teams look at it, well, we probably want the guy who gets on base the most to have the most opportunities to get on base. And coinciding with the walks, he works counts. He's seen the second most pitches this year at 3,068. And now Schwarber's been an Iron Man. He's played 160 games this year, but it's still very impressive. And seeing that many pitches is definitely going to help out your number two, your number three, everybody in the lineup because they get to see what that starter or that reliever is about. And two, the more pitches they throw, the more tired they will get. The more off their game they'll be, the quicker you can get that big starting pitcher out of the game. So yeah, Kyle Schwarber doesn't get hits very often. That 
is not good. Typically, you don't want somebody to hit under 200. But I think it's time for me to play some defense because clearly Kyle can't. His XBA is 219. Expected batting average. That's taking a look at the swings he has and where the ball is hit. And it funnels into a number of what he should bat, being 219. Not exactly going to win you the silver slugger, but it is a little bit better than sub 200. And two, batting average, it is an important stat, but it is not a predictable stat. If you look at the last two years, he hit 266 in 2021, 218 in 2022. Again, he's not exactly cronies with Luis Arise in that number, but it's better than this year. And that's what batting average is. It can be a very luck-based stat. You could hit a ball 120 miles an hour, but right into a glove in center field. It's an out. You could have poor contact, barely touch the ball. It's hit 60 miles an hour in the air and drops over the second baseman's head. That's a hit. Now, would coaches nag you for getting a hit, even though it was a poor swing, poor contact? No, you'll take the result, but you're also not going to get up on a guy because he hit the ball hard just right at somebody. You're doing your job. And of course, there's other factors. There's the strikeouts. We'll talk about that. Don't worry. But look at Tony Gwynn, one of the greatest contact hitters, one of the best hitters in all of baseball history. 1984, his first All-Star game. He hit 351. The next year, 317, 329, 370, 313, 336, 309. Batting average is weird. It is not something that you're really going to have that much control replicating it year in and year out. Now, there are three stats that you can kind of replicate, that being walk rate, strikeout rate, an ISO, isolated power, extracting the extra base hits from your batting average so you can get a clearer look at how much power, how many extra base hits this guy is getting. And if you look at Schwarber from 2021 to 2023, his strikeout rate, pretty much the same. His walk rate, pretty much the same. It's actually up 4% since 2021. And his ISO, also within 0 .011 points. The difference, the batting average. It certainly wouldn't be my video if we didn't talk about strikeout rate. Kyle Schwarber led all of baseball with 215 strikeouts. Not particularly good. Striking out that much is a detriment to your team. Funny enough, he rarely chases. He's in the top 86th percentile in not chasing after pitches out of the zone. He just swings and misses a lot, and he also takes a lot of strikes. Like I pointed out, Schwarber's seen the second most pitches this year. He has the fourth lowest swing percentage when the ball is in the strike zone. It says a couple things. One, a lot of times he probably has a better eye than the umpire. Secondly, he's doing his job as the leadoff hitter. He's seeing pitches. And third, and most importantly of all, he's waiting for his pitch. He's waiting for the fastball. He's at 34 home runs, has a 579 slugging percentage. But when it's a breaking pitch, only nine home runs, the slugging percentage drops to 317, and he struck out 85 times on breaking balls. And almost half of his strikeouts are on breaking balls, despite seeing half the amount of breaking pitches as he does fastballs. He swings and misses almost 50% of the time on breaking balls. So I can't defend it. He strikes out a lot, but other guys do too. The median strikeout rate this year, 22.5%. Here's some notable guys who exceed that. Marcelo Zuna, Pete Alonso. You see Matt Olson, Shohei Otani. Granted, they're about 4 or 5% off of Schwarber. Let's get a little closer. Luis Robert Jr., is within 1% of Kyle Schwarber. You see Adolis Garcia. Again, I'm not saying that it's good that he strikes out this often. I'm just saying a lot of people do. And then you've got your homers. You've got the barrel percentage. You've got your exit velocity. 47 home runs. We talked about ISO, isolated power, seventh in all of baseball. He's probably the player that fits that three true outcome model that's become so popular best. He's the epitome of it, but that's not a bad thing. I think every team needs to have a Kyle Schwarber. 
I mean, he's been excellent for the Phillies, a team that doesn't strike out that often and a team that also gets on base very often. You're going to need a big power threat to unclog the bases. And for a team that limits strikeouts, Trey Turner, Bryson Stott, Alec Bohm, Bryce Harper, these starters are all under the median strikeout rate for the year. It's okay to have a guy that's going to be above the median by a couple percentage if you look at the power potential behind it. Now at that same token, you can have too many Kyle Schwarbers. There'd be plenty of games you would win by double digit runs because you're walking so often, you're seeing so many pitches, you're putting pressure on the pitcher and then you're hitting a big home run. But then you're also going to lose plenty of games because of that, not scoring many runs. You can only walk so much before the opposing team just doesn't allow you to. And if you can't consistently put the ball in play, give a chance for those runners to advance. Or an error. I mean, a lot of teams play guys like Kyle Schwarber out in the outfield. You gotta take advantage of that. And if you can't put bat on ball, you can easily fall into a hole. So I think every team should have a Schwarber. Maybe even two Kyle Schwarbers. But you probably don't want any more than that. So overall, is Kyle Schwarber a good player? Yes, he is. He definitely is. He plays really poor defense. You don't want him out there. With the universal DH, he shouldn't be out there. But if you leave him at DH, if you just take his bat, no, he's not the best hitter. There's guys that hit for as much power as him, get on base as often as he does, but also don't strike out so often and are also going to be a threat to run, are going to take an extra base. But for that Phillies offense, I would say he is damn near perfect. 